Welcome back to the Power Public YouTube channel. Today's video, we're going to be stepping you through the simple processes of installing a data logger onto your go kart. Now, as you might notice, if you are a regular, I do sound a little bit funny here, a bit under the weather, but I'm soldiering on. So let's get to it. Special shout out goes to our YouTube members and Patreon subscribers. Thanks for that little bit extra. So when you get your new Micron, we're gonna open up the box and pull out the data logger. So once you pull the Micron out, you can see this bolt here, and this is the mounting bolt that we're gonna to use to hold the data logger on to our go-kart. And over here is where the battery's gonna go. I'm gonna show you how to charge that up. And then on the side here, this is upside down, so I'll turn it up the right way. We've got our temperature in the top, our lap beacon if we're using one in the middle, and down on the bottom is our expansion port. And if you get in close, you can see that they're labeled here on the side. And also this one's a three pin, this one's a four pin, and this one's a five pin. So the, you can't mix those up or you shouldn't mix them up because the pins won't line up and you can damage them if you try to force them in. So just be careful with that. Bottom part of the box, we've got the battery and the charger. Now these ones here are just magnetic. It's got a little USB, it's pretty straightforward. We're just gonna snap those two together. And then when it's charging, this LED light's gonna change. And the unit comes standard with one sensor, which you get to choose. In our case, we're using a cylinder head temperature, but if you're using a Rotax or an X30, you're gonna select the water temperature or exhaust gas temperature sensor. One of the most satisfying things about buying a new Micron is peeling off that sticker. So we're gonna be installing our Micron on this brand new go-kart and it doesn't have a provision for the mounting of the Micron, but you can buy these little brackets from Cartmaster or DPE here in Australia, and it makes the mounting nice and flush below the steering wheel, and it's a perfect fit. So the unit comes shipped with three washers here. Now, for the purpose of this go-kart, we only need the one. So we're gonna take two of those off and put them on the back side. First, feed the RPM cable through here, and then bring the unit in vertically and slide the bolt through this slot as you rotate the unit to the right. And now you can slide the unit all the way down to the bottom of the bracket, install the two remaining rubber washers, the steel washer, and then the M8 nylon. Caution not to over tighten this nut as you can damage the thread that's just inside the housing. As you can see, we've removed the battery for easy installation. It is over on the bench getting charged up. You will need to do that from brand new before you use the unit. Now, if you've got the older style Tony Kart, like a retro, or this Tony Kart Rocky with the center that of the steering wheel that's just like this, your Micron can bolt straight on just like that. Simply install the washer and the nut and do that up with a 13 millimeter ring spanner. The next part of the exercise is to install the cylinder head temperature sensor onto the engine, and then we can run the wires back to the Micron and zip tie them into the chassis. So if you're gonna be using the cylinder head temperature sensor on, like we are on this little engine, get yourself a pair of side cutters and you can remove this washer simply by cutting it and then bending it off. Install the sensor into the cylinder head and screw the spark plug into the motor. And then holding the sensor, you can do up the spark plug with your plug spanner. Careful not to turn the sensor too hard inside this uh, casting because you can damage it and break them quite easily. They are fragile. Now the three pin temperature plug goes into the top. And as you can see, there's a little indent here that goes into the sensor. So it can only go in one way and then you just screw those in tight and you're good to go. So before we start tying the wires in, we're gonna attach our RPM cable with this little clip. And what you can do is pull the wire back, just like so. And you can wrap this guy around the high tension lead. like so, and then feed it back down through here. And 
and that can help improve the RPM signal to the unit. Without this connected, the Micron won't think the engine's running and you won't record lap times. So with the steering wheel turned all the way to the left, I like to tie my wires together with a couple of zip ties with a bit of slack and then I can zip tie them down to the frame. Now if you do have any excess cable, you could double it back on itself down here underneath the seat. And obviously we don't have a seat in this go-kart just yet, but if you did, you could drill yourself a couple of little holes and then with those wires doubled back on themselves, you could obviously chuck a little zip tie through here. Then we can just zip tie the rest of the cables here along the side of the seat if we were to drill a few little holes for those cable ties to fit through. Now adding a data logger to your go-kart is one of the simplest jobs that you can do. All you need is a data logger, maybe you need the little bracket as an extra if it doesn't fit onto your steering wheel, otherwise bolt it directly to the steering wheel if you can make it fit. They are a great tool and they're awesome for tuning your car and your drivers. If you've made it this far, thanks so much for watching and tuning in. If you haven't had enough of us, <laughs> you can check us all out on Instagram and Facebook. Once again, I apologise for my sore throat here this week. I'll be back next week bringing the fire. Till then, keep it real.